Hello everyone, it's March 8th, 2018. It's, well, it's Thursday. It's Harp Thursday. And the reason I'm recording an episode on Thursday is because uh, less than two weeks ago I joined Patreon, so you can now become my patron. And I set a goal of $75 pledge per month, and I would do a month of Harp Tuesdays. And um, we've, we've reached that goal, so thank you to my patrons. And this month in March, I'm gonna do four Harp Tuesday episodes. I missed, of course, this last uh, Tuesday. We didn't quite get there before Tuesday. So I thought I would record an episode today and then do one every Tuesday for the rest of the month. So look forward to a month of Harp Tuesdays. And this episode, I'm gonna talk about two against three, specifically as it regards or through the focus of looking at DBC's first Arabesque. And I've talked about two against three a little bit before, I think in, in, in some episodes on different pieces and also in an episode about dealing with tricky rhythms. But I want to just do a fairly short episode talking about, talking about that. And then as I say, looking at the first arabesque. So first of all, two against three, that's where we're playing, uh, let's say triplets in one hand and duples in the other so that we have three notes going on in one hand, steady pulse of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And in the other hand, for example, we might have one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, have two steady equal pulses. So two in one hand in the same amount of time and three in the other, how do we fit those together, right? They don't, do they, do they line up? How, uh, it looks maybe initially a little bit um, challenging, but it's actually, if we look at it mathematically, it's actually quite beautiful and works out really nicely. And I, I know I've talked about this before, but I printed up a nice little, nice little example. So just as if we were trying to multiply fractions, everybody's favorite thing to do, I'm sure, um, we need to have a common denominator. So if we multiply two times three, right, the, the, the twos and the threes, we get six. If we then, so if we subdivide this group of three and this group of two into six subdivided beats, everything's gonna line up beautifully. So here's an example. With the triplets, so we've, here's our six equal beats. We're gonna go one and two and three and one and two and three and etc. right? So that, that checks out that these are three equal beats. It makes sense, they come every other, every other pulse. With the duples, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That also checks out, right? The group, the equal length, three, three pulses worth. Then that lets us see exactly how they line up, right? That the second B to the duple comes right in between the second and third triplet at the same pulse of the ands, right? So if we're doing one and two and three and one and two and three and, this duple, so like together, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and three, and, precisely in the midpoint. So if we move this up here, right, we're, then we'd be going one, three, four, five, one, three, four, five, bum, 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 bum. That's the rhythm of a two against three, is this, And of course, I, I've talked about this before, right? We can we can do that between the hands, like together, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, um, or on the harp. And try and really have that rhythm sink in to, to, to our ear and to our, our body so that when we get a, a triplet, again, duple pattern, Just, it just is automatic, right? And um, we can work with a metronome, we can count, we can, but just doing some work like that to try and really lock in to the sense of triplets against duples. Now, Debussy's first arabesque, and, and uh, Henrietta Renier did a wonderful transcription of this actually, and the second arabesque as well, which you can find on IMSLP. And it has a lot of three against two. 
For example, the middle section, this beautiful tempo rubato. Right? One and two, there's the duples. There are the triplets in the right hand. And, and throughout. Now that, for example, that part, if we're fairly confident with our three against twos, that should hopefully be no problem, right? Here's that one, two, and three, one, one, two, and three, one, or one, two, three, four, five, six, one, right? However we want to break it down, but I think that one, two, and three to me has always felt easiest, the easiest way to count it. Um, the the perhaps one of the most recognizable parts of the arabesque, right? After this little introduction, we get. Here we come. That little. Those are triplets in the right hand with duples in the left hand beneath that. This is really challenging. Now, it's challenging not just because it's three against two, which again, with, with a certain amount of work, hopefully starts to really feel solid. It's challenging because of the way it's written with these triplets in the right hand, this, so the pulse in the right hand should be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. The problem is that for our ear, it's really hard, it's very, very hard, even if we know that it's one, two, three, one, two, that triplet, for us not to feel the pulse is being one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, right? Just having a like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up passage, it's so hard to hear that, it's triplets. The one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, the changing pulse on bottom note, then top note, bottom note, top note. So that makes it particularly hard, I think, when we're trying to fit those together with the left hand. Um, uh, one thing to do is to get the metronome out, right? Just to double check, because what can happen sometimes is that maybe the hands aren't completely even, right? We wanna make sure that whatever speed we're practicing at this, that it's even and not. Something where maybe we end up at the same right spot on the downbeats or whatever, but things have gotten a little bit uneven. So you could take the metronome, for example, and set it on the triplet. I think it's, it's easier than setting it on the duple. Um, Sorry, this is an old metronome. Let's get it a little bit temperamental. There we are. Um, so if then we're hearing the triplet, right? Then it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay. Left hand. Remember, we're going to be on the and between two and three. So it's one. together. That's a little bit hard, right? Is when we come out of having at least one hand playing the triplets to continue putting that duple in the left hand in the right spot and not maybe speeding up and wanting to play with the metronome. So one,
right and left hand feeling that boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, where, where you're coming with, together, between, together, between, together, ba, 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 ba. Um, and, and then, you know, maybe you can gradually speed it up, right? At a certain point, and some people take this opening section really, really fast, right? Or even faster than that, perhaps. Um, at a certain point, for me at least, I start to, again, because it's hard to feel these as triplets, I start to maybe lose my ability to be totally locked in, to know for sure, yes, I'm lining up everything exactly where it's supposed to be. So we have to trust, perhaps, that the work that we've put in, that we're keeping each hand even, that we know how it's, we've done the slow work of how it's supposed to go, and that as we speed it up, the relationships stay correct, both hands stay even, and that hopefully we come out of it at the right moment. So one thing to be aware of in something like this, right, is to just be aware of what's the finishing point. Right, it's that D in the right hand and the E in the left hand. We should finish together on that. So, sorry. Yeah, I think that was okay. And of course, trying to trying to maintain that left hand, right tempo once we finish the little pattern that it doesn't speed up or slow down. Doing that slow work, trusting yourself, and the final thing is to record yourself and listen back because that's going to give you a great feedback because it can be hard again when you're playing it. I'm, I'm curious to what, hear what it sounds like when I listen back. Um, hopefully my rhythm remained consistent throughout there. Um, so that's a, a great way, a great way to get some feedback. So anyway, again, just this, this mathematical idea, and this can apply to any group, three against five, four against three, four against five, whatever, you can multiply them times themselves, write out that number, like four against five, write out 20, one through 20, and notch down on the top where one of them come and on the bottom where the other ones do, and see that relationship. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, as I say, this arabesque in particular is challenging because of this one, and two and one and tendency to want to hear that is duples but uh beautiful piece and definitely worth worthwhile it's kind of fun to try to be able to fit that all together um hope that's helpful and i will see i'll see you on tuesday cheers <laughs>